Before I start today's video, I just want to send out my condolences, thoughts and love to Colin Locke's family after the news that he tragically passed away on the weekend there. I was devastated when I found out this news. I used to love speaking to Colin on match days. He was the photographer for Newcastle United Women's. He was a great, great bloke, an absolute gentleman. It was a pleasure having a bit of crack with him on match days and to see just how much he loved the club. Like He loved Newcastle United, he loved the women's side of the game. And he was very passionate. He'd been at the club for many, many years, 14 years. He was battling with an illness and cancer for 12 years. And he's passed away on the weekend there, Colin, unfortunately. Very sad news. Absolute gent. I'm really hoping the club do a nice tribute to him for the cellar weekend, where obviously the men's and the women's are playing. But he was a great servant in this football club, a great bloke who loved his job and loved the women's game and everything else. And like I say, it was... It was really nice every match day, you know, he was a beaming light, he was a, a big part of that, you know, he was very close to the, the lasses and Beckley and the, and the team behind there, and he was a big part of the club, you know, he really, really was, he was a, he was a legend, and he'll go down as a legend, a lot of hard work from him over many years of dedication and commitment to the football club, so fair play to him, what a bloke, what a legend, and his legacy will live on, Colin Locke, rest in peace. Right then everyone, welcome back to Magpie Channel TV. Quite a bit of news to get through a day, mainly brought to you by The Telegraph, so take some of it with a pinch of salt, as we know. However, there is a lot of truth in this, I believe so. Um, I don't believe it's exaggerated. I think the article itself is pretty much bang on in what we can expect in terms of the transfer news, which we'll get into in a few moments there, on the potential departures of Trippier, Longstaff, Almiron and Callum Wilson. That could obviously be hit and miss with one or two, but I'll share my thoughts on that in a bit. But first of all, let's talk about the clear the air meetings that the Newcastle United hierarchy have had with Toon manager Eddie Howe. The club are said to have been alarmed after Eddie Howe's public outburst on Friday to the media about the England rumours, about his future at the club, insisting that the dynamic has to be right going forward with all the reshuffling behind the scenes. After a man of and Murdoch Gudusi left the club, Eddie Howe insisted that things have to be right in place and he has to be happy to go forward. So that was obviously an indication towards how the relationship will be with new director of football, Mitchell. The new performance director, James Bunce, who Mitchell himself has brought in as well to help with the squad, the injuries, the analytics, the assessments, and then obviously Mitchell being a real driving force behind transfers. So Eddie Howe now is working under a different regime. It's not him calling the majority of the shots and a man are doing what he wants type of thing like yes Eddie that sounds great you know <laughs> things have changed you know there's important people in very important roles now so there is a lot of going on behind the closed doors I know people are getting a bit nervous and touchy at the lack of signings so far however this I reckon will be a very big week for Newcastle because they will be in Tokyo this time next week we've got the whole game this Saturday which I'm going down for can't wait for that and Eddie Howe wanted two players in by that pre-season tour to Tokyo. And I think, you know, you're starting to see Arsenal and West Ham and a couple of other teams making moves now in the Premier League, in the transfer window. Now that the Euros is over, Copa America has finished, Newcastle will follow suit. Because obviously we've had a change, how we'll work, change transfer plans maybe with Mitchell on that coming in. I am positive we will see at least one player signed for Newcastle this week. Or maybe, I'm also hoping, that is the case. But anyways, on to the article at hand then. Clear the air talks held with Eddie Howe and Newcastle United's hierarchy. These talks have went positively, according to the Telegraph. They are saying that Howe is assured now. He has seeked those assurances on his future, how the club's going to work going forward, and he is happy with the outcome of these meetings. So it is said that the likes of Darren Eels, Mitchell, they all sat down with Eddie Howe. They discussed what's going to happen going forward, and they have said to him... He still holds the power. Don't worry, Eddie. Things aren't going to happen behind your back. We're not going to sign players like you know about it. You know, Derek Lambias, Mike Ashley Special, Dennis Wise on Kevin Keegan. None of that's going to happen. Eddie Howe is still going to have the final say on transfers. Mitchell could well draw up a list of potential targets, but Eddie Howe will then be given that shortlist and the choice of who he wants, whether that be a player from abroad or a player with Premier League experience. How will be the bearer of that? How will decide who comes in? And he also won't be getting players sold behind his back. Now, that was kind of a hint towards the Elliot Anderson thing where we know 
they didn't want to lose Anderson there at the training ground. You know, your Tyndalls, your Howes, they all loved him. They thought he was a big part of our future. Eels and everyone else was insistent. Look, Eddie, unfortunately, because of PSR, he must go. And I'm sure Eddie Howe would have wanted to work with the Ancuba Minter as well before he had get flogged to the Seagulls. But going forward, Eddie Howe is going to be in control still of transfers. He will have final say on who comes and who goes through those doors at St. James's Park. And that has massively helped him and his belief going forward and his decision making of whether or not he accepts the England job. Apparently England are still really fancying Eddie Howe. They're still fancy giving him a call, tempting him with the national job, very high up on the contenders list to replace Southgate. But how now looks more set than before to stay at Newcastle after a dodgy little outburst the other day where one minute he's unwavering in his support for Newcastle, the other minute he's contradicting it, saying, you know, well, if, it, if the system doesn't work, there's no point me being here. It's not going to work. I'm not going to be happy. You're not going to be happy. No one's happy. There's no happy meals around here, Freddie and Dindle. So that was a bit dodgy. But now they've had the meeting. Now they've said, listen, Eddie, you're in control. The power's still yours. Yes, you're going to have to report a bunch now. Bunch is going to be there on the training ground, monitoring injuries, seeing what's going on, performance analysis. That's going to be taken away a little bit. But Eddie Howe was sitting there thinking, well, what's my role now? Am I just a head coach? Because I think Eddie Howe does let that control. You know, that's why apparently he didn't take the Celtic job because he couldn't bring all his backroom staff and he wouldn't have been in control of transfers there. That's why things were falling a bit at Bournemouth, because they were on about bringing in, you know, a director of football or changing things up transfer-wise. Don't go for that target anymore. We've made a mistake there. Can we look at them now? So Eddie Howe, when he came to Newcastle, he had all that. Amanda and Murdoch were like, yeah, do what you want, mate. There's no one else here. We're, we're, we're in the show. We're sick of it. Now, obviously, we're finally sorted out behind the scenes this summer. Big moves with the director of football in there, performance director, you yield your silver stones, they're already set in stone. Eddie Howe has got to focus on being a coach, being a manager, but he also wants to focus on who he is coaching and managing. He doesn't just want to be lumped with a player. Mitchell not on his door and go, Eddie, meet uh, 23-year-old Derek. Yeah, he's the new strike. I was signing him from Tokyo, six and a half million. Good luck, you know? So, yeah, Derek from Tokyo probably doesn't work. Anyways, point being, shafted with players. Put upon him, do your magic. Eddie wants to see on that, and apparently he has got those assurances however in the same article they are talking about players being sold and you know the link the likes of Wilson and Trippier away on that where I think Eddie Howe you know how much he loves his players loyalty towards them sometimes it's a hindrance of him but that's the way he works and he said previously even just a few days ago that he wanted to keep Callum Wilson then Wilson gets injured then he's saying he doesn't know if Wilson's going to be ready for the start of the season and people are thinking bloody hell why do you want to keep Wilson well You'd think that could be along the same lines as Trippier as well, you know, brought to the club, being a catalyst, being a captain, being a leader on and off the field for us, Kieran Trippier, an incredible player. However, and I said it back in January, time to go. I would sell him as well. You know, you can't hold on to these things forever, this romance and, you know, this ideology of, oh, well, he was great. You remember what he did, do you, Eric? No. You know, he was fantastic for us until the second half of last season and off-field troubles and everything else we've talked about before have affected him. And even in the Euros, he didn't do great. I don't think he did terrible, but he's just a bit average now for me. You think, you know, he's 34 this year, a full-backs rule in the modern game. You've got to have quick. He's losing his legs, losing the concentration a bit. It is, you've got Tino Livermento there. It just makes sense. One year left on his deal. If it's led to be true that these Saudi Arabian clubs are sniffing around him, it's a perfect move for both parties. We get a bit of Saudi cash. Trippier gets to jet off into the sunset, you know, finish off over there, loads of money, big pay, whatever. It just makes sense, and I think it's got to happen, it should happen. Now, it's not going to probably improve PSR or FFP massively, but we're past that now, so we need to build that up still. So, steadily building that up, getting a bit of money for Trippier. I mean, isn't he buying Munich wanted him just six months ago, didn't they, in January? So, you know, hoping that he could get a move back to the Bundesliga, it'll be unreal for him, to be fair, whether that ship's sailed now. Don't know, but the Saudi clubs are definitely interested in them, even one or two American clubs. You know, imagine this, right? If I was him, I'd be I'd be ringing up Bex, yeah, ex-England teammate and all that. Well, don't even play with Beckham, but you know what I mean? Both play for the country. Bex, get us to Miami, yeah? Love the beaches, love Willie Bay, but, you know, Miami's nice as well. Want to play with Messi, cross the ball into Messi, have a look at that. Perfect for him, that. You know what I mean? But that move, Saudi move, any move, I think suits Will. He's been here, what, two and a half years, whatever it is. Brilliant for us, like I said. One of the best, if not, right-backs we've ever had. You obviously got to think of Warren Barton as well, but, but Trippier has been 
unreal for us. Absolutely fantastic. And we'll always be forever grateful for him taking that risk when we were in the bottom three in that January, our first signing post-takeover. So Trippier looks set to leave this summer, according to Telegraph. They are almost certain he will be gone and they will be shocked if he stays. Other players that could be leaving Newcastle United this summer is local lad Sean Longstaff, North Shields born and bred. He only has one year left on his deal and he could be short of game time this summer. Obviously with the resurgence of Sandro Tonali who will be able to play at the end of August. Still can't play behind closed doors friendly. Absolute joke. Newcastle beat that German team the other day and Tonali can't even play at bloody Adidas HQ. He's just doing laps up and down the swimming pool all day long. That's all he's doing. Get him in the Olympics in Paris for a bit. Means we'll get his fitness levels up. Do you know what I mean? He's doing the dives. Hey, hey, unreal. So, Tonali, Bruno, Julian, you know that's going to be your midfield. We we'll hope that Willock can stay fit for a change. That would be lovely. Louis Miley come back from his injury, obviously after the back of a great debut season last year. Um, so there's that there. But I think there's still room for Longstaff as a squad player. I don't mind it. But if a good offer came in, and when he's only got one year left on his deal, you do start to think, where does his future lie? You know, he's at that age now where I think he should probably be looking to get first team football. And without chance of playing European games and that, he's going to be warm on the bench a lot of the time. He's like fifth, sixth choice now, man. So for me, I think Longstaff probably will go. Although then it, it does ask the question, you know, if it did have a few injuries, would you then have to sign another player? You know, have you got another, have you had to buy another midfielder? How much would you pay for him? So it's a sticky one with Longstaff. Let us know in the comments what you would do, but. If there is a good offer coming in, you know, your Leicester's, your Everton's are linked with them for about 15 to 20, I would take that, like, I would take that. For a fifth-choice midfielder, I would take that um, and run with it. So, Longstaff with a year left could also exit the Mags this summer, which would be a shame in the sense that, you know, like I said, Geordie born and bred, graphs every time. Sometimes the quality isn't there, we know that, but, you know, he's, he's done a lot as well in Newcastle Street. He scored some big goals, Champions League goals, so respect him, to be fair, um, even though, obviously, we have criticised him before as I will all the time, see it how it is. And I'll praise him if he scores a good goal. Kind of how it should be. Shouldn't have biases, right? But uh, we'll see what happens with Longstaff. Obviously, Miggy as well. Miggy's still linked to go. Again, it's another Saudi team linked with him, but does he want to move? He didn't back in January. We'll see how that progresses, but that's the main one we are looking at this summer in terms of getting decent money in for him. You'd hope you get 25 to 30 million for Miguel Almiron. That was the case from Al-Shabaab from the Saudi Pro League back in January. If you can get that for him, happy days. Massively need to strengthen that right wing department this summer, as we know. That is critical. And up top, Cal Wilson. We've talked about him a lot in recent videos, so we'll be quick on this one. He's still linked with the move away. I'd be surprised if anyone pays any good money for him, since he's always injured. If they did, thank you very much. Take that and run. Same thing we said, what I said about Trippier for Wilson. Great servant, great goal scorer, but we know he's injured your record. Is ridiculous. So unfortunately, unless he's happy to be as the third choice, we need a new striker, which we do regardless. To be fair, but if he's happy to be third choice, keep him. Although again, his contract's running down. The age, thirty-two now, is he something like that? So listen, mate. I said it's time to get busy. I don't mean that way, jiggy. Time to get busy in the transfer window. Big week for Newcastle. I'm telling you, we are now. Checks date twenty-second of July. Only a three and a bit weeks till the season starts. New signings needed. Old signings out. Old signings out? Current players sold. Whatever. Anyways, that's enough for me. Bit of a brain fog on this Monday afternoon. Cheers for watching, people. Subscribe to the channel. Drop in the comments what you are doing with this squad. With the players that I've listed, are you selling, keeping, Trippier, Wilson, Almiron, Longstaff, anyone else I haven't mentioned, speak as fast as you can. See you later. <laughs> Losing the plot.